All right, we're here. We're here. Oh, this is cool. Oh. This is sick. Is this Bruno? The chat's saying Bruno. <laughs> but we don't talk about it. Encanto confirmed. Oh, this is sick. I love these, like. Okay. We turn off the gravity. Oh, they're underwater. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. That's the cauldron right there. Ah, oh. oh, jets and flots of and Bruno Jafar. Ah, oh. <laughs> look at all the villains swarming them, mate. Yes, he is. That's going to be our floodboard aerial, by the way, I'm telling you now. And she's got the trident. Ursula's Return, is that the name of set four? Is that the name of set four? It's got to be, right? Hello and welcome back to Locana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're going to be discussing a bunch of news that was just revealed on Lorecast via the official Disney Locana Twitch channel. Um, they revealed a lot to do with um, some dates for official events, um, the Lorcana challenge, and we got a bunch of card reveals. So we're going to discuss a bit of everything and look through all the new cards that were revealed. But yeah, the whole thing opened up with um, another one of their traditional trailers, um, introducing set for Ursula's return, which I'm really excited for. That video was so, so hype. Are you looking for some singles to finish that Lorcana deck? Then you should check out Card Market, your saucy teapot, for all of your trading card game needs. Some amazing art here that was revealed by the Disney Lorcana Twitter account um, not long after the stream started in the style of the video. And yeah, this is just stunning. I need this on a play mat. Uh, but yeah, it's been kind of confirmed that this is the end of like the first major part of the story um, between sets one to uh, this being set four and it's going to kind of finish the arc of Ursula being the big bad and um, obviously those clues have been you know uh, that have been relevant not relevant words are hard they've been there since set one these clues towards our Ursula being the big bad um, and we're going to be getting the finalization of that part of the story which is really exciting. I don't know that everyone cares about the overarching story of Lorcana, but I do. So yeah, that was that's pretty cool. And obviously it's very villainous. And they also revealed the Illumineer's Quest, which is not like it's in the same box shape as like the gift sets that they've done previously. But this acts not just as a gift set, but a new way to play the game cooperatively. You can play it on your own. Um, but the hope is that you will play it with someone else against the game and um, they haven't gone into too much detail exactly of like how it's going to work but the idea is you play either on your own um, or with a partner to basically take down Ursula it's called Deep Trouble um, I think it comes with everything you need and obviously on this screen you can see a couple of new cards that we'll look at in more detail um, later on in the video obviously also features some cards from previous sets like we've got the, uh, the Pooh Pirate Captain Winnie the Pooh here there's these gold cards as well which I really don't know what that's meant to be. Um, this card here, Ursula, ruler of Lorcana. I, I got to hope and assume that this we will also get a Floodborne Ursula in this set of this art. Um, you, you've got to imagine. But yeah, this could just be a cool card or it could be something to do with playing the game and you have to put this down and that's the token that marks the character that you've got to take out. Although it's not got any stats on it, so not sure. But it also comes with like a prize pack. 
which is a beautiful pack. It looks like a little contract. Only the victors shall unseal this packet and claim the prize within, or this treasure becomes property of the sea witch Ursula for all eternity. And they made it very clear in the stream that you're not meant to open this until you you or you and your partner have won, and then you're meant to open this. Um, and they, they very heavily implied, hey, guys, like, this is, it's, it's part, this, opening this pack is part of the story in and of itself. So try not to spoil it for people. Obviously, the internet is going to be the internet. The information is going to be out there. Um, let, let's be real. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in like experiencing this um, properly and going into it blind and getting to fully appreciate the story and whatever is revealed in this pack, then I advise you do it quickly, not long after this comes out and try and avoid spoilers the best you can. But yeah, it looks really cool. Um, box alone for me would be worth putting on my shelf. And yeah, the idea here is this is meant to be a regular thing. The Illumineers quest is something that I think they inferred, like they've implied it's, we're going to see these again because they've specifically said that this first one is called Deep Trouble and you can see it on the, on the box there. So I imagine we'll get more of these in the future. It might not be every set, it might be every four sets if their idea is every four sets is telling a particular part of the Lorcana story. So maybe that's the idea and they'll all be under different names. But yeah, this is certainly cool. They also showed off the back of the box that has already been revealed. We've seen the front of this box of the Lorcana Gateway, the new product that's coming to um, basically help people to learn the game. But we're now seeing the back of it and we're understanding why they kept it secret because there are new cards revealed on the back of this, which of course we will look at later in the video, but seemingly also comes with cards from prior sets, which makes sense. But yeah, you get two starter decks, 30 cards each, four reward packs at 18 cards each because the idea is like you're learning the game a bit at a time once you win you're meant to open a pack and add cards to your deck that's the idea you get some damage counters some character movers which i think are the little um like stands like tokens to represent your characters but we don't know much more about how exactly they'll be implemented into the game um two character base oh i think the character bases are actually the little stand two character movers two character bases so yeah one two tokens and two things to move them not sure exactly but one game board a rule book a guidebook and then two deck tips i can't make out this word pamp mets no idea but two like little tips to be better at the game i guess uh but yeah some new cards revealed on the back there so we'll come to those in a bit and we heard details about something very exciting the Disney Lorcana Challenge. Now, a bunch of cool cards were showcased as prizes, which when we do go through all the cards that have been revealed, we'll have a look at the cards that aren't reveals, they're old cards, but they're special versions, alter alternative art or full art versions that you get for prizes. So these are our first dates for official Lorcana events to earn yourself some amazing prizes. And they did confirm that at these events, the top eight will qualify for uh, either the North American Championships or the European Championships, obviously based on whether you go to North America or Europe, or Europe for a Disney Lorcana Challenge. So along with a bunch of prizes, um, you, th this will be your first opportunity to qualify for the North American and the European Championships. On that note, they also, got, I'm look, I've got a bunch of notes I'm looking at here. They also confirmed that both the North American and the European Championships will have d day zero last chance qualifiers, which basically means at the event, there will be a tournament which you can play in as your last chance to qualify for the main tournament that is going on over the course of that day weekend three days whatever how whatever it ends up being so there's plenty of incentive to even if you're not qualified to go um, and try and earn that last uh, last chance position they've also confirmed that there's going to be a bunch of side events when they were talking about all that they did say that for Worlds, which we don't have a lot of information for, they didn't say much about Worlds at all, but they did say that Worlds will not have a Day Zero last chance qualifier. We're getting those for the North American and the European Championships, but not for Worlds. But then they ended up that off by saying, but Worlds is going to be part of a larger fan event anyway. So it sounds like there's going to be tons of reason to go to Worlds, even if you're not qualified. So yeah, back to this Disney Lorcana challenge because there's a lot to say about this. So yeah, the first dates revealed in North America, the May 25th, 26th, um, we're getting Atlanta, Georgia. We'll be hosting one June 8th to 9th. Uh, it will be coming to Chicago, Illinois. And there are four more North American events yet the, for them to announce. And they, they didn't put a date on it, but they kept saying in the next couple of weeks because apparently they got the confirmation of the rest of the dates 
just as the stream was about to start and they tried to get it sorted so that they could reveal it in the stream but they said it wasn't possible but they will look to announce that soon so in the next couple of weeks hopefully we'll we will have, we will know the rest and in europe same weekend as in atlanta may 25th 26th um it, the the lorcan challenge is coming to france and july 6th to 7th so not matching the chicago illinois dates um it's going to be coming to germany and europe has two more events to be announced i'm really hoping per selfishly that one of these events is in the UK if so that'll be the one I go to um if not then I expect I will go to the one in front maybe Germany I don't know if like I will I will be going to at least one of these Lokana challenges 100% that will be happening so yeah selfishly I really want to see one in the UK announced um but yeah great to finally have some dates I, I like I, I know people want the rest of them because these places might not be uh, particularly suitable for everybody so you want to wait and see that one is an out hope that one is announced that's more suitable to you um but yeah little more little bit more patience and we should have that information soon one note they have announced that these Lorcana challenges initially are capped at 512 players they are going to be um it's it's ticketed you need to register for it um and they they said specifically when they know they there will be an announcement in advance of the gate opening for people to buy tickets they will make an announcement in advance to say hey this will be the date and the time that you can log on and register for one of your Lorcana challenges at initially it is capped at 512 players um and i was in the live stream and a lot of people were quite upset at that and rochelle the community manager it was rochelle um matt the english art di um matt Matt Eng, the art director, um, and they were also joined by the Illumiteers, which was so well deserved, pioneers, um, pillars of the Lorcana community, so it was great to see them involved. But yeah, they were paying some attention to the chat and they, they said off the back of that, look, just so you know, the 512 cap is initial. We will adapt as necessary if we feel like that needs to be, um, needs to go up. They, they didn't confirm anything, so I don't want to put words in the mouth, but they, she did specifically say, look, that's just initially, we will adapt as we need to. So I'm sure that if the 512 cap fills and there are enough voices of people saying hey i wasn't able to get one then i'm sure they will address that so we'll talk about the prizes that have been announced for lorcana challenge they haven't announced all the prizes but a good amount of them a lot of them being cards that we'll go over when we look through the new cards that have been revealed but the hot topic of conversation is something that has been revealed is that for disney lorcana challenge and i repeat as of yet only for Disney Lorcana Challenge, only for these events, they are switching the Swiss format and games are going to become two game rounds. You will only ever play two games against any given opponent. It's, it, it is not going to be best of three for these Lorcana Challenges. And the way it's going to work is that you get a point for every win you get out of those two games. If you win both of those games without conceding a single one to your opponent, then you get three points. They did also confirm that in the event of a game finishing 1-1, whoever won the second game gets the tiebreaker. So essentially, winning game two is going to be more valuable if it's one all. Now, I'm going to be honest, I need to sit on this a bit more before I feel like I can completely commit to how I feel about this. And I, I won't just fence it, uh, but like, I'm coming right off the back of seeing it. I need to think about it some more. I need to see some other people's takes and assess and like give an informed uh, uh, opinion on how I feel about this. Um, but... I'm not me. I'm definitely not immediately panicking because a couple because of a couple of things. Firstly, the most important one is because this is only a Disney Lore kind of challenge. You're not going to get this anywhere else. They've also said that obviously when it gets to top cut, that it does become best of three because you need a definitive winner. They're not going to start enforcing it in local local game stores or uh, other events. Although they have said that they are leaving that option open to local game stores and pl and places running events. So really, it's going to be at the uh, at the behest of whoever is running your LGS, whether or not this becomes something that they trial or potentially permanently implement. Off the bat, I don't hate it. Um, it does mean that you're going to get more draws overall, probably. Um, they talked a lot about one of their fort trails behind this decision being to help with the fact that going first 
is an advantage. Not always an advantage. I'm not going to fully dissect that conversation. It's not always an advantage. But if you assume two, P, two people are of the highest level play, and you also assume that both players hit their reasonable outs like they don't both completely like one player's not getting everything and the other player's not completely bricking it's like obviously that's a factor but if we assume that both players are of top level top top skill and both players hit pretty much all the cards they want to see that is when you're going to see more often than not that going first is an advantage and this creates a situation where if you are if if, if just before game one if you lose the dice roll then if you know you're facing someone that is of your skill level, and again, you this can be influenced by just bricking and bad luck, but if you we live in hope that both players' are decks, decks are built consistently enough that they should be seeing outs, then you're immediately feeling bad that more than likely, as long as you get to finish to, um, two out of three in the time frame, 50 minutes that you've got, then the likelihood is that just losing the die roll may just be the writing on the wall. It's not always going to be, but sometimes it will. And this has basically created a situation where you, both players are going to go first once. Um, you're going to get more ties this way. I've seen, a, I've already seen a lot of takes. Um, at the end of the day, my like my initial thought trade is just, well, okay, well the the best players, the ones that are going to make the top cut, are the ones that more consistently just two owed their opponent. So I don't hate this. Um, I need to I need to dwell on it a bit more. Um, I need to I need to think about it. I need to read some more takes. And please, by all means, come into the comments and tell me how you feel about this. Have a discussion with each other. Be nice. I know that this is quite a big deal for a lot of people, and there's going to be some passionate opinions both ways, which is totally fine. Um, but be nice, all right? Respect your fellow villains. But please do give me a takes. That is pretty much all of the competitive information that they revealed. Um, but yeah, we've got a bunch of new cards to look at and some alternative art slash full art for some special prizes. So let's jump in and take a look at those. Let's start off by looking at the prize related things. So we're getting a bunch of um, alternative art and full arts. First of all, this is the one that I am the most excited for. So I'm very pleased that this is the participation award. All you have to do is come to a Lorcana challenge and play and you will get one of these stunning Dragon's Fire cards. Stunning. I am so excited to get my hands on. I'm so glad that this is the one that is the participation because it, it would be it's my favourite out of out of all of them to be honest. Um, and just as a note, they mentioned that they they went back to the their original art for Dragon's Fire didn't wasn't didn't look like this. They didn't have a fuller art version. I know some cards we've seen then reveal like the original like full art version, which then we get a reduced version that we can see on a playable card um so i thought i assumed that this was just the original art and maybe there's even more to the frame um but they did confirm the art director was there said no we didn't actually have all this detail so we when we knew we wanted to do this um we went back to the artist and got them to expand it which i think is really cool but yeah i'm so excited to get this Next up, we've got a full art version of Let It Go. Now, this is being rewarded to the top 64 players at a Lorcana challenge. However, they made multiple, they insinuated multiple times that more players might get the Let It Go. And basically, when they were talking about the um, two game format, they talked about how they wanted to provide incentive for players to keep playing, even if they lose their first two matches see they get two nilled and destroyed the first two matches they want to provide incentive for players to keep playing and basically they said the points that you get in a tournament won't just contribute towards how you place in swiss and potentially making top cut but there will also be prizes available based on points they weren't more specific than that but they did bring that up specifically when they were talking about let it go they were saying well even even if you know that you might not be making top six there's still a chance that you could get enough points to get a let it go so that's the only example they've given of like point incentive um prizes um but i think that's a great thing um and i'd like to hear more information about more things like this that are available as a result of getting points but to be honest like 
like if I if I went zero two in my first two matches of a of a Lorcana challenge, just got two owed both games. But I knew that if I could potentially still get this card by just getting like at least even if I just went one one over my next five rounds, if I knew that that was enough to get me this card, then that would definitely incentivize me to play even more. I mean, I probably would anyway. I've gone to a big event like that. I just want to play Lorcana, but some people would just drop, and this may be a reason to keep them in. So love it. Next up, we've got Cinderella Stout Hearted, a stunning. This will be going to the top 32 players. This will be my second chase uh, after the Dragon's Fire. Like, th this is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, what more can you say? Uh, we don't need to, we, we know, we already, we already know the guard's good. Um, but, oh, what a prize. Top 32, like, that's mm, juicy. Next up for a top 16 card, Rapunzel gifted with healing. I'll be honest, uh, this is stunning, like, absolutely no doubt. But of all of them, this would probably be the last on my priority. I, uh, for me, it's Dragon's Fire, Stout Hearted, um, sit at the, probably the Let It Go, to be honest. Although this is an alternative art, and again, it's going to be worth a lot more just because it's harder to get. But just from, a, from an art perspective. But this, this is still beautiful and obviously a staple card. Um, this is going to go for a pretty penny. And yeah, this is going to be available for the top 16. And then for top 8, um, they specifically said there's more pricing to be revealed for top eight um you would qualify for the north american or the european championships but for top eight you also get this uh rapunzel mat which they have said is foil apparently we need it we, we they, they're, they're gonna reveal it with a better camera or something um but yeah the, the, this is a foil mat so wow and yeah to be fair like the card, like, is is cool, but yeah, the, the, on a mat, this this appeals a lot more to me. And it's foil mat, and just this logo in the corner is stunning. Yeah, this mat, I'd be much more excited for the mat, not gonna lie. And yeah, that's gonna go to top eight. And one last thing they have revealed about prizes for top four, they are going to be getting a very special, serialized, gold, Brave Little Taylor Mickey Mouse card with alternative, yeah, it's gonna be alternative art, it's gonna, they said the word gold. I don't know, I don't know, mate. It's, it's a block of gold in the form of a BLT. But yeah, it's alternative art. Um, Rochelle was really hyped on like, this is this is something else. Um, and this is something else they said they, they they can't just reveal on the camera they had. Like that it needs its own, needs its own floor. It needs its own showing. It needs its own presentation. So they've really hyped up this top four um, Brave Little Taylor Mickey Mouse. So I'm hyped to see that. But yeah, that's everything we know about prizing. So let's finish off by going through the cards that have been revealed. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Mirabelle Madrigal. The uh, Encanto has been confirmed, uh, which I'm glad to see. Great film, and obviously they they revealed Bruno in the in the trailer at the beginning. Uh, but yes, and they are getting their own characterization. The first of them revealed is from Amber. Five cost, uninkable. Three five quests for two support and saving the miracle. Whenever this character quests, your other Madrigal characters get plus one law this turn so i think we we need to look at the other characters that fit this before we can really judge this but it's uninkable um is a nice big bulky five um support we can grab it again with the dragon gem but yeah let's look at the other members of her family before we judge her too much so first up, we've got a vanilla, a three-cost inkable Felix, fun-loving family man, two-four quest for two. Who needs a gift when you're having this much fun? I mean, again, it's a it's a three-cost. It's a, it's it's like it's Piglet, like it's a Rapunzel setup. Not that that really gets played anymore. But four is bulky, um, and two lore is not uh, insignificant. And again, we could potentially make him a three lore character. So meh. Next up from the Madrigal family, we've got Julietta, three cost inkable, one four, excellent cook. Uh, quest for one and signature recipe. When you play this character, you may remove up to two damage from chosen character. If you removed damage this way, you may draw a card. So it's a mini Rapunzel, like, uh, like, nowhere near as strong one interesting thing to know off of that of this is that you can remove damage from an opposing character it doesn't specify it has to be one of your own um so that's a thing i mean again don't know how many times you would want to do that but again if you're drawing a card then it's probably worth the damage so yeah just a specific interaction that is worth pointing out um obviously it's going to be 
a lot more budget than Rapunzel, so that's something positive to say about it. So yeah, interesting. Like it's not something I would immediately think would gain place in in Amber decks. Um, I think you'd. It's all right. Um, if you were playing it, it would be more because you're benefiting from the Madre de Gal um, characterization to work with a sister. And speaking of her sisters, the rest of the family are in Amethyst. We've got Louisa, magically strong one, four cost uninkable, four three, quest for one, and rush. Um, I mean, we have if we're playing Ruby Amethyst, then we have Mulan, um, which is the same, which is the same as this. Um, I, I mean, obviously, and Fox is obviously infinitely better. You would never play this really unless it's because you're benefiting from the characterization. But cool up. Next up, we've got Dolores, Easy Listener, Forecast Inkable, 3-3, three, three, Quest for 2, and Magical Informant. When you play this character, if an opponent has an exerted character in play, you may draw a card. This one I really like. Um, if, even if you're making your, your opponent think twice about exerting, then that's something to take into consideration. But generally, like... They're, they're, they're gonna quest, they're gonna challenge, they're gonna um, sing songs. So this condition is not gonna be difficult to fill a lot of the time. And the fact that, the fact that she's got two lore saves her, really. Um, and an inkable card, 3-3 three, is not a bad stat line. Yeah, it's okay. I'm not saying it immediately jumps into Ruby Amethyst decks. Um, but yeah, definitely one to come back to, and I wouldn't write her off completely. And definitely one of the better members of the family so far in terms of the effect. And lastly, we have Bruno, Out of the Shadows, 5 cost inkable, 4, 5, quest for 1, and it was your vision. When you play this character, chosen character gains. When this character is banished in a challenge, you may return this card to your hand this turn. So I really like this. The fact that this is a come into play ability is really good. Um, I'm glad it's not locked behind in questing. This is going to open up some really nice plays if you've got... Maleficent on board, if you've got Talkative Puppet on board, anything of a come into play ability, a fox, a rabbit in particular, this is going to work really nice with turn four rabbit, and then if they exert, um, turn five um, Bruno to rush in the rabbit, and then it's returning to your hand, and you might be taking them out, um, and that's going to cause, like, just this card's existence is going to make people think how they what they do on their turn five before going into yours um yeah this is a card i like um it's uninkable um so it's gonna hurt it but the stat line's not bad and again we can bounce it and reuse it so yeah i'm again i'm not like oh well this goes straight in ruby amethyst i'm not convinced it does but the best of the lot so far um synergy needs testing but it's not one i would write off so yeah and and this art mwah. so yeah big fan of bruno so yeah, Mirabelle um, giving all of those family members plus one law. I mean, like, really, in many ways, I feel like you would just play Lucky. Um, just because it's not just the Madrigal characters that will get the plus law. Plus, Lucky is diverse in that you could instead just choose to draw, um, look at the top cards of your deck and potentially draw some cards. Um, but obviously he's only got three willpower, so he's a very fragile. This five is pretty good, keeps her out of smash range. Um, obviously you've got to worry about a long came Zeus. Um, but yeah, I'm not convinced. There's definitely a fun deck here with the Madrigals. Um, but I'm not hugely won over by Mirabelle herself. But I think Bruno is the most interesting. And I think there's something to be said for Dolores. Like that, that's I don't think we should write that off. But yeah, great to see Encanto in Lorcana. Let's go through some more. They have finally revealed our first Trident card. This has been they've been teasing this Trident for time, um, and it has been it is here. It is a two cost inkable amethyst item with symbol of power. Banish this item. Chosen character gets plus one strength this turn for each card in your hand. So obviously amethyst wants to have a lot of cards in his hand. So potentially you would get a three four bump off of this. Um, I think in most situations you would probably just play something like the Sword in the Stone, which gives challenge. Challenger, um, and is a song, so there could be synergy there, and just again, songs are easier to play. Um, I don't think this is fantastic, but it was um, 
very strongly hinted by Rochelle during the stream that this is just the first of tridents that we are going to get. And again, if you look at this flavor text, just imagine all this power in the wrong hands. And obviously from the art, this is Ursa at the point in the story where she's got the trident. So we're going to get other trident cards um, and I'm sure they will They will get like, maybe we'll get one of every rarity and they will get better. To be honest, when I, even before she said that, when I first saw this, my first thought was... I still have my theory that we're going to get Floodborne items one day, um, and then who knows. Uh, but yeah, she's already confirmed that we are getting other Tridents. I don't think that was confirming Floodborne's as much as I think that's going to be the case. Um, but yeah, we will get other Tridents card. This is the point of the story where it's under Ursula's um, command, but I'm sure we'll get other cards for it. So yeah, you'll have to see it. They also revealed a Rapunzel card, Appreciative Artist, 5 cost inkable, 3 5, quest for 3, and Perceptive Partner, while you have a character named Pascal in play, this character gains Ward. So we finally get that synergy from our Chapter 1 Pascal, um, Rapunzel's companion, so you'll have to see that. I like this, 3 lore, Pfft, that's pretty good, I mean it kind of reminds me of just set 1, um, the Maleficent that we had, um, well we, we still have, um, which is a 3 6 six five cost inkable quest for three um but again if you are playing with amethyst giving this ward is going to be good um so yeah like it's it uh, maleficent was really good for her time i don't know if in modern format just have potentially having ward on this brings it into meta um probably not but it's cool three laura you can't ride it off i miss lucky diamond sapphire so you never know and hey if you are playing with amethyst and again with more pascals we might get more pascals in sapphire potentially makes this even more playable and uh, apparently the um the, the the resident rapunzel artist aubrey archer is their go-to for these cards and a beautiful art indeed so yeah love to see it we also got another nice little vanilla here. Daisy Duck, lovely lady, lovely lady, smell them in the air. Gosh, guys, I'm not going to finish that. But if you know what I'm, what that was a reference to, if you know what that's from, let me know in the comments. That's your challenge. What was I referencing? Although I probably shouldn't. Anyway, uh, generic one drop, one three stat line quest for one. Nothing exciting here, but one drops are never to be written off because, again, we could get Floodborne targets for them. But look at this art. Um, the, my, the, my Shakespeare days are coming back to me. Um, and look at this. Look at this text. Sweet Daisy, the fairest duck I ever met. Each flaxen lock a rush of, flush of flowing gold. Her bill the colour of summer sunset. Exquisite plumes a wonder to behold love it so yeah just a generic vanilla but um, I, I, I love this we also have a new Anna braving the storm this art is fantastic two cost inkable one four quest for one and I was born ready if you have another hero character in play this character gets plus one lore again I'm, I've said many times I'm a big fan of benefiting from characterizations um like princes kings queens we've seen we've seen bonuses for things like that um like the grand duke um and yeah i'm just a big fan of this sort of synergy so love it and then the i should have shown you the other card really for keep it in order but yeah after talking to olaf anna marched straight and uh, marched into the unexpected storm to uh, to save Kristoff. And we'll segue straight into the card that really comes before the Anna card. But we've got Hans, Noble Scoundrel. Brilliant art. Storyborn villain Prince. We love as a villain. Three cost inkable sapphire card. Three two stat line quest for two. And royal schemes. When you play this character, if a princess or queen character is in play, gain one lore. The flavor. Absolutely love it. Um, and yeah, they've got the picture of, the, of Anna here. And then this is the hat that... Um, she's holding in the other artwork and yeah the flavor text Hans was confident he could bring Anna to I don't know if it's Anna or Anna I haven't seen Frozen for a long time um, to Ursula all he needed was something of Kristoff's to lure her in so yeah it's been insinuated with the story that Ursula is possessing all these different glimmers and not all of them villains um, she's just the, 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 her, her inky touch um, has got them on her side because the opening video shows Minnie Mouse um, on, on, on the side of darkness uh, but yeah this is it's cool. Um, becoming a three lore character for a three cost inkable and hitting for three is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I wouldn't write this off at all. I, like, I think this has probably got a strong chance in a sapphire aggro deck. So yeah, love it. Next up, a really interesting one from Ruby. We've got Goofy. Super Goof. Love this art. 
love, love, love. Four cost Inkable, two, four, quest for one, rush, and super peanut powers. Whenever this character challenges another character, gain two lore. What the heck is this? What the heck is going on? Like, uh, like, Ruby Amethyst, this, and goats, and what on earth? Um... Challenger as well. Put this with Sheer Khan. You're gaining three lore. Um, and again, if you you can play this with Amber, and this willpower is perfect to like follow this up with a Rapunzel. Like you'd need eight ink by that point in the game, but that's realistic. Just late game, Goofy Rush Rapunzel. So now he's still sitting there. Um, he, he has to do the challenging. Thank God. <laughs> um, this is crazy. Yeah, like. This needs testing, but yeah, this is strong. Uh, love the art. I'm scared. Okay, four cards left to look at, and these are some pretty juicy ones. Um, first of all, for Ruby, we have Mulan, Elite Archer. Um, artwork appreciation, they confirm this is her then this is her part of a team battling Ursula. Um, and look at these frame breaks and like the the, the tentacle slash ink. Um, this is beautiful, beautiful card. Six cost inkable, two six, quest for two, shift five, and two abilities. We have straight shooter. When you play this character, if you used shift to play her, she gets plus three this turn. So if you do shift her, um, then she becomes a five six. Um, and triple shot. During your turn, whenever this character deals damage to another character in a challenge, deal the same amount of damage up to up to two other chosen characters. So, I don't think this is off the walls bonkers, because this is quite situational. After that initial turn um, of you playing her, it's going to be hard to... Um, to be fair, you only have to deal damage, you don't have to take them out. So... Becoming only a two... I still don't think it's bonkers mad. I think it's quite reasonable. But it is good. And it does create situations where, hey, if they have three or four low-cost characters... Like, you imagine the Ruby Amethyst quite regularly. Like, it's not uncommon for a board to be, um, like, Snake plus Kuzgo plus a one-drop plus maybe a mini or a fox or a rabbit. And, like, this is standoff of two to four characters on each side of the board. Um, and if they are questing, singing, exerting for any reason, and you have a Mulan on board, then being able to play this down, you're immediately a 5-6 if you shift, and you're challenging, like, obviously, the, your ink's dry because you've shifted, so you're immediately challenging into something and probably taking it out, hitting for 5. Um, and then because, and you don't even have to take it out, just doing the damage, you're then doing the same amount of damage, so potentially 5 damage to 2 other characters. So, again, it's obviously very telegraphable because you would have to have a baby Mulan on the board at present. Um, in Ruby, we have two Mulans. We have a five cost and we have the four cost uninkable that has Rush, which is probably your better target for this. Um, if you're playing with Amber, you have cheaper ones. So, I think in Ruby Amber, it's probably going to be easier to fulfill this because you can play a cheaper Mulan. Yeah, Amber has a three cost and a four cost. So, like, the three cost is reasonable to put down um because again it always feels bad to use your turn four or five to set up for something that is just a shift target for something else um like dreadnought jafar into the um striking illusionist can be the exception just because of the amount of advantage jafar can then get the floodborne can then get well the second floodborne can the, the stage two of the pokemon line can then gain but it still never feels great um but yeah, I don't think this is unreasonable. I would I would panic if we see a Ruby or Amethyst um, one-drop Mulan. Um, I don't think Amethyst would get it. It, it would be Ruby, if anything. That's going to make this a lot better. Um, so yeah, it's clearly got some utility. Um, obviously, will become better potentially with six-cost songs, which we don't have. I don't think we have any six-cost songs in Lorcana. And there's a couple of characters that fit that mold um, that they're going to become a lot better just because they're something that can shift on turns three to five that can sing a six-cost song. Although this is shift five. It's still quite expensive for a shift character. It's not as cheap as something like Robin Hood, um, which is a five-drop shifting for three. This is a shift drop shifting for five. Um, yeah, it's clearly good. I'm, I'm not scared of it straight away, but it's something that needs to be respected and really it's going to depend on what other Mulans we might get. If, if we get something cheaper than the four costs that we've already got in Ruby, then I might be a little bit more scared of it. Um, but yeah, really cool card.
Next up, probably the best reveal of the entire, of the entire, of the entire. We have Ariel, Sonic Warrior, six cost, Ingable, three, eight, quest for two, shift four, and amplified voice. Whenever you play a song, you may pay two ink to deal three damage to chosen character. So if you've got the ink with this on board, just playing any song for any reason that you might do in Steel Amber Songs. Um, Bear Necessities, Be Our Guest, Grab Your Swords, Whole New World, the list goes on. Then you just get to pay two ink to, for a free smash. This is mad, and the fact that this is... like I kept saying, please don't let the Floodborne be in, in Amber. But I should have been saying, don't let it be in Amber or Steel, because this is crazy. Steel Amber Songs benefits so much from this, um, because we're already playing the Aerial. We Now we have a shift target, which is just good, and just allows us just extra free ping for playing any song. And we now have reason to play, like... One cost songs that maybe weren't good enough before, but just because we can trigger this, they are now good enough. This is, this is like, my early call is this is S tier. There, there's a part of me deep inside that is thinking, am I over exaggerating? Like, is the deck just good and like, or, or at the very least, is it just kind of like a two count? Um, because the rest of your deck is already doing a lot of the stuff you- I don't know, it just seems too good to not be brilliant. This is- this is my early pick for S tier of all the cards that we've seen so far. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think you can deny it's at least good. Um, I think just that we're debating is it good or is it bonkers through the roof broken? Um, it's not broken. Nah. <laughs> I feel ways about this card. I need to digest this a bit more. What do you think of Sonic Warrior? Let me know in the comments. And our last two cards go together, really, because they are some more broom support. Um, so I am one of the people that from very early on said, we're going to get a broom in each cut and each ink. That was my early call. And Rochelle specifically said, oh, the, uh, I heard people saying quite early on, oh, we're going to get brooms in each ink. But no, they very much live in steel and amethyst. Um, so, yeah, I was wrong. Called out by Rochelle on the Twitch stream. <laughs> Not directly, but I know Rochelle. I know you meant me. Anyway, another fantastic frame break. And our first version of Mickey Mouse, which is... The Sorcerer um, from Fantasia. Um, and, like, the, there was a point the Illumiteers brought up about this being a Floodborne, but being not a original Mickey. Um, but this still makes all the sense to me, because, like, this is not the traditional Mickey Mouse. This is a version of Mickey from a particular story. So that, uh, that fulfills what Floodborne is. Floodborne is they don't always have to be dramatically different. A lot of them are. Um, you look at something like Intellectual Powerhouse Gaston, and there are other examples of ones that are more of a dramatic change. But some of them are simpler. And yeah, this is reasonable to me that the Sorcerer version of Mickey is a Floodborne version. And to be fair, you could even do a Storyborne version of this Sorcerer Mickey, but this is, you know, he still looks the same, but he's become more inspired. He's become braver. All these things. Love this art. Um, a great scene, a really tense scene from the film. But yeah, let's take a look. Five cost Inkable, three, four, quest for two, shift three. Currently, our cheapest Mickey Mouses are all three. We have Detective Mickey, we have um, the Steel Stalwart Explorer Mickey from Into the Inklands, um, we have the Steamboat Pilot Mickey um, from First Chapter, and also from First Chapter, the Amber True Friend Mickey. So, still waiting on a one drop. I'm, I'm, I imagine we'll get a steel one drop or a two drop of Mickey. That would be nice. Uh, but yeah, resist one, which we know is, is pretty cool. And sweep away. When you play this character, deal damage to chosen character equal to the number of broom characters you have in play. So we now have four or five brooms, the, the, the original Amethyst one, the, the, the Rise of the Floodborne steel one, and then we got two more? Three more? It might be three more. Yeah, we got three more in Into the Inklands. The Big Sweeper, the Swift Cleaner, and the Dancing Duster. So, yeah, the amount of brooms we've got, we can do ping times that. 
So the set one uh, bucket brigade broom is our cheapest at two. And then we've got the steel one is three. The amethyst one from Into the Inklands, the big sweeper is three. And then the other two are uninkable five and six. I think we need to see a bit more. I mean, we need to see a one cost broom. That like the, the one cost broom is what's going to make all the difference. That's going to increase your ability to flood them. Um, and also other ways to flood brooms onto the board. Um, obviously, we can already play them cheaper if we've got the wayward sorcerer Mickey. Um, but I'd like another way that we can rush um, more brooms onto the board to really um, uh, to consider this as being incredible. Um, but another fun deck, another like again, I love synergy with theme decks. Just more support for a really cool archetype. So yeah, nothing to, um, to 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 get too excited about yet, other than just this incredible art. I absolutely want to want a foil of this. Oh, and it was mentioned about this these numbers down here, um, two two five of two o four. The same is true of. The Mulan that we just looked at, she's 224 of 204. And the next card that we're going to look at in a moment is also uh, a number off the scale, which most people in chat immediately assume to be mean that they're going to have enchanted versions. But Rochelle confirmed it's because the Mulan, this Mickey, and then the last card that we're going to look at in a moment all come in the Illumineers Quest Deep Trouble set. So that's why their numbers are uh, irregular. But hey, we might still get enchanted of them. Who knows? And yeah, going on to that last card to finish us off. Ma uh, artwork by the fantastic Matthew Robert Davies. You love to see it. Legendary. We have Yen Sid, powerful sorcerer. Two cost ingable, one three. Um, quest for one and two abilities. We've got timely intervention. When you play this character, if you have a character named Magic Broom in play, you may draw a card. And after Arcane study. While you have two or more broom characters in play, this character gets plus two lore. I think this one's really good. Um, just the fact that he draws a card if we've got a broom in play, that ability on its own, like, is some to, a reason to consider him. Um, again, on a turn, if you literally just go two cost broom, or if we get a one cost, and then Yen Sid. Drawing a card is good, and we're applying pressure to the board. Um, and again, if we are able to build up this broom brigade, um, then it becomes a three questing character for a really cheap two cost. So this is something else that makes us want to have a deeper look at the broom archetype, because this is a pretty cool ability, and I'm a big fan of this card. Give me more broom support! But yeah, that's it for the video. That's everything that has been revealed in the first lore cast. Um, so more information to come in a couple of weeks, more information about organized play. But yeah, um, great to finally have some dates to put in the diary. Again, I'll look forward to finding out the rest of them. Uh, great to hear about the Law kind of challenge. Again, let me know your thoughts down below how you feel about a two-game format in the Law kind of challenge circuit. Um, and yeah, a bunch of new cards. Uh, anything here that I've overplayed, anything I've underplayed, what's your favourite? I'll hear, I'll hear all about it down below. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe for all things Law kind of. Hit the like button to show your support and we'll see you soon.